Barrett. I'm the president and CEO for South Bruce Gray Health Center. And we're here to welcome Lisa Thompson, our member of provincial parliament, uh, for some very special announcements that she's got to make about uh, capital redevelopment here at the Carnegie Hospital. And I just want to set a bit of context for what we'll be talking about this morning. There's two projects on the go. The first project is the entire redevelopment of the hospital. So we've been pursuing that for a number of years. The second project is a small addition that we're going to put a CT scanner in. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, Liz. <laughs> All right. So, so we don't have, we do not have a CT scanner here in Concordia. So that means that people, that patients that are coming here that require a CT are traveling down the road to Walker to get that care. And that's obviously not, uh, we want to improve that from a clinical perspective, but also from a patient experience perspective. And there's been a number of false starts with redevelopment. Um, a number of people around this group today know of um, the challenges we face. Larry, our former board chair, and Jack and Becky and the, the foundation know that we've submitted applications in the past to the Health Center and have not been successful in moving those along. So today is a, a really good announcement, um, which I won't jump ahead of, um, that we're looking forward to, to to make sure that we can move this forward. The redevelopment of the hospital we're doing in phases. So the redevelopment I talk about, it's the entire hospital that we want to redevelop. But to increase our chance of success, we've actually broken it into two phases. So we intend to redevelop the emergency department, diagnostic imaging and lab first. That's most of the outpatient work, the area that you see right behind us. And then the second phase of the redevelopment is working on the inpatient unit. So we see that um, probably in, I won't give time frames, but few years the redevelopment and a longer term framework for our a timeline for the re redevelopment of the, the inpatient unit. The second capital project, the CT scanner, which is going to be coming right out here, it'll probably end right over where our bill is sitting there, uh, we want to have done by early next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, we've had great support from the Carden Foundation, which was here from Becky today. Um, so that's going to get us into a, a spot where we can get that CT in place. And you'll hear from Dr. Gerben and Dr. Sung uh, about the importance of that to patient care here in Concordia. We couldn't do this alone, as I've mentioned a couple times. The support of the Concordia community, community has been fantastic. So we have our municipal partners here with Mayor Edie and Mayor Tulin. Uh, you're going to hear from them today as well to talk about the support that they've given over the years. And they've been here for some of these uh, previous conversations where we want to move this along. <laughs> so with that in, uh, introduction, I want to pass it over to the member of provincial parliament from here at Bruce, Lisa Thompson. Thank you very much, Mike. And it's a pleasure to be here this morning. And uh, I echo Mike's comments in the sense that it's a gorgeous morning for a wonderful announcement. Thank you all for being here. And uh, good news to the community. So I have a few notes that I need to share with you, Liz, so hunker down. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is not 2011, we're good. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And uh, I wish live on Facebook you could just uh, hear that comment. That was very funny. But uh, set that aside. Um, Mike, honored guests, it's such a pleasure to be here today. And I know these are not business as usual times. As many of us, as we see today in, in the parking lot, we're reminded that we're affected by COVID-19 personally and professionally every day. But I do hope that you and your families are healthy and safe. And I share that with you because we wouldn't be healthy, we wouldn't be safe if it wasn't for our medical professional staff. And I want to start by thanking the staff and leadership right here at the South Bruce Gray Health Center. It's been incredible and your ongoing efforts in the face of the pandemic are not lost on anyone. You have to trust that. These are unprecedented times and leadership here at the South Bruce Gray Health Center at Cardin site has just been phenomenal. When this virus has swept the world, our doctors locally, our nurses locally, our local PSWs and healthcare workers really showed us the depth of their compassion and their dedication and their commitment to protecting our community. I want to extend my sincerest appreciation and please take that inside as well. 
to everyone looking out. Our government recognizes that the many challenges Ontarians are facing are due to the pandemic, and we have not we have not missed a moment to put up every effort. We've rolled up our sleeves and we've worked hard to implement measures that will not only protect our hospitals and our communities, but to help everyone adjust to a new normal. Our province was presented with a real challenge when competing in the global mar mar marketplace, excuse me, as we tried to secure items like PPE and medical supplies as COVID-19 washed over the province. We knew from the outset that we would have to take an aggressive action to seek out those supplies. And we did not hesitate at the opportunity to ensure that we could embrace Ontario-made homegrown innovation to meet our needs as well. I must say, given the Premier's expertise in supply chain management, he has led by example. Our government mobilized quickly and leveraged our procurement expertise and existing partnerships to address shortages and ensure we could get the PPE and critical supplies needed. And I know that other organizations in this community work very, very hard to help keep our community safe and secure equipment as well. Since beginning, the beginning of COVID-19, my team and I have worked around the clock at the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services to support the Ministry of Health and the procurement of these essential supplies. And as we continue our fight against COVID-19, it's never been more important that our healthcare providers and our frontline workers have not only the supplies, but also the facilities they need to continue providing care in a safe environment. Investments in infrastructure projects help hospitals and, the necess and make necessary upgrades, repairs and improvements to ensure they can continue to deliver accessible and high quality care. Recently, our government announced we are investing $175 million to address these critical upgrades, repairs and maintenance in 129 hospitals across the province. And King Carton is one of those 129 under the umbrella of the South Bruce Gray Center. And I can tell you that there is more over and above that HERF funding that I'm pleased to announce today. And uh, just as a, um, I think it's really important to let you know that you have an amazing CEO for the South Bruce Gray Health Center. And I, I tracked him down on his vacation just a week ago or so. And uh, I didn't realize he was on vacation, but he picked up the phone. And uh, I didn't know whether to bother him or not, but then it's like, oh my goodness, I have to, because this is too good of news not to, not to get moving on. So I just want you to know that, before we get to the real announcement, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Locally, when it comes to her, the infrastructure funding, we're investing 2.16 million in the South Bruce Gray Health Center, and it, it will be used across the four sites, and that's the infrastructure funding. My colleagues and I know, as you do, that maintaining hospital infrastructure is critical, ensuring that Ontarians have access to the health care services that they deserve. And while these investments, I noted, are critical, we're all very much aware that the Kincardine site of the South Bruce Gray Health Center needs redevelopment. As Mike alluded to just moments ago, while in opposition, I had my leader of the party visit this hospital. And when we looked in the boiler room, there were large tomato juice cans underneath. And that was just a, a you, you might, are you thinking about that? <laughs> and that vision has never left a lot of minds. And I also am very pleased to share with you that while in opposition, my colleague, Christine Elliott, who served as health critic at the time, also visited this hospital. Everyone that I work closely with knows how important this redevelopment is and how this community deserves this investment. As alluded to before, this project has been about a decade in the planning, and with our government making small and medium-sized hospitals a priority, I'm very proud to say today we're finally moving forward. I have to tell you though, whenever the opportunity presented itself, I lobbied on your behalf to keep the Concord Redevelopment Project 
top of mind. I also met with many of you here today, and whether it was in my office, right here at the hospital, over the phone, or at the cruise nights in Concordia on Friday nights when I was buying my 50-50 tickets. <laughs> we talked a lot about the need for the redevelopment of this hospital. In the end, it took a few years and forming government to really be in a position to give the King Harden Hospital and community, and I will say, the community growing around it, the support it truly deserves. And that's why we have gathered, gathered this morning. It brings me the greatest pleasure to be here with you to announce the Ministry of Health has given approval for the Kincardine Hospital to move to stage two of the health capital planning process. To prove we are serious and that Kincardine is finally going to see its hospital redeveloped over and above the HERF funding, our government is making an additional investment of $2.93 million to support the major redevelopment of your hospital. represents up to 1.52 million of planning funding towards the cost of early capital planning requirements, as well as a capital grant of $1.41 million to support the expanded CT program at the health center. I want to recognize that the CT funding adds to the original $1 million that was donated by our very good friends and neighbors at Bruce Power. Thank you for that. I know how critical these projects are for King Cardinal area and the demand for CT services have doubled over the last five years. This funding will play a vital role in addressing the high demand of CT services right here in King Cardinal. And as Dr. Gervin shared with me this past winter, it will also help attract valuable medical staff now and in the future. To close, I would like to share that the Concordia Redevelopment Project is part of the government's commitment to invest $27 billion over the next 10 years in hospital infrastructure projects across Ontario, including the additional 3,000 beds that we look to develop. I'm so grateful that my colleague, Minister Christine Elliott, Deputy Prime I'm so grateful that my colleague, Minister Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier, has stood with me this entire time, knowing the importance of this investment. She's been working nonstop, I have to tell you, long before COVID-19 on behalf of our healthcare sector, and quite frankly, I feel she's doing just a tremendous job, and I have to share with you. Premier Ford, Minister Elliott, and our entire government stand together. We're united in being committed to making capital investments right like this, right here in Kincardine, so that we can strengthen our health care system and ensure high quality care is available close to home. So thank you again to the team at the South First Gray Health Center. You're I just admire and appreciate so much your exceptional dedication to the communities you serve and the patients who rely on you. You're our frontline heroes. Thank you for all you do, and I am so pleased to be able to share with you the official check presentation to make this real. So, back to you again. We have Bill, Mike, who would like to come forward? Um, Warden Tulin, Mayor Edie. Maybe if we bring the podium forward, maybe up here by the podium. Thank you. We can make this official. I'll get my mask back on. I think that we need to scatter in a W just a quick point. No, you got mask on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Okay. 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 Come on up, Ann. Or Becky. Well, maybe I should be here. Y'all got to squeeze yeah. in a bit. If you want, you come beside me. Get close to that check. Put your hand <laughs> on that check. <laughs> I guess we should spread over a little, little bit. I think she wants to spend a little bit. Oh, okay. Look up here, please. Thank you.
They're scared of you, man. They're scared of you for sure. <laughs> I haven't been lost around here for about nine months. Now. Don't you miss it? <laughs> At least in person. Well, congratulations, everyone. Very good. All right. <laughs> wow, that's a great announcement. Thank you, Lisa, on behalf of the Kikari community, our staff, our physicians, um, the wonderful announcement to advance the redevelopment of the Kikari Hospital. As I always say that our staff and our physicians are strong, competent, compassionate, but our infrastructure is aging. And this is a, a significant move forward to make sure that we've got the right facilities here to support all of our staff and physicians. So thank you very much on behalf of Bill Gray and the entire Concern community. You're very welcome. And Lisa, you talked about a team that it takes to actually move this along. Um, and just a good example of that, you heard the lawnmower start up over there. Um, our Vice President of Corporate Services and our Vice President of Clinical Services got out of their chair to go see about that lawnmower <laughs> and see if they could put it down. So it tells you that we all rally together and no job is too small for any of us to work together. And I really need to acknowledge Stephanie Douglas, our Corporate Planner. She's doing all the work behind the, the submissions to the Ministry of Health. And it seems easy to say that uh, stage one to stage two. Stage one was a thousand page document that we had to submit to the Ministry of Health to get this moving forward. So it's an incredible amount of work. That's Stephanie Douglas and uh, Drew Braithwaite, who's over there dressing the lawnmower. Um, uh, the two of them will work diligently to make this move forward. So a big thank you to them. The other group that's really important to a hospital corporation is the board of directors. And I'm very pleased to have Larry Allison, our former board chair, who's a concurrent resident, I guess Point Clark resident. Gary Kinloss. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's right, Gary Kinloss resident. Um, our current board chair, John Gilbert, is from Chesley, is uh, un uh, unavailable today, can't come. Uh, but we're very pleased that Bill Heckler is here. So Bill is a board member, also chair of our concurrent redevelopment oversight committee. So that redevelopment oversight committee is the guiding force that tells us, tells staff at the, the hospital about how we should proceed with the with the application. And Bill has been fantastic and a strong supporter of staff and of the entire hospital. So Bill has a few words. Thanks, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of South Bruce Gray Health Center Board of Directors, I'd like to thank the government of Ontario, the Concarden Foundation, Bruce Power, our nearby municipalities for their continued support of these important projects. Um, as Mike said, of our four hospital sites, Kincardin has the highest demand for CT scans, which currently results in high volume of patient transport between Kincardin and Waterloo. Kincardin's new CT scanner will greatly improve the patient experience in this community. The CT scanner and its building will be built first and then incorporated into the first phase of the redevelopment project. And interestingly, as Mike said, we are standing almost exactly where the CT scanner will be built. As chair of the Concarden Redevelopment Oversight Committee, affectionately known as KROC, I should tell you that the community input, uh, I'll tell you about the community input which is helping shape and guide the project. KROC is composed of not only staff, but community members who are providing valuable guidance to all steps of these two projects. And KROC can also assure you that Mike and it has a solid team of staff, consultants, and, and contractors who will ensure that your investment is well managed and who will provide high quality facilities here in Kimberly. For all of us, this is a really exciting time. These projects help South Bruce Gray Health Center to meet its commitment to, to provide quality health care close to home. Thank you. Our next speaker is Becky Fair. Becky is the chair of the Carden and Community Health Foundation. Um, and again, the foundation has been a tremendous um, partner in this. We wouldn't be here today uh, without that found, without those foundation partners being here right beside us. So, Becky. On behalf of the Carden and Community Healthcare Foundation, we are thrilled to hear this news today. 
that the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care providing funding for the next stages of the approval for the CT scanner and the redevelopment project in what has been a very difficult and challenging year for all of us. Our hospital is and will continue to be a pr provider of core medical services and the added benefit of a CT scanner will improve the standard of care for patients, save on travel and transportation costs, and attract much needed physicians and healthcare prof professionals to the area. We have been very fortunate to have strong support from our communities, the residents of the municipality of St. Cardin, Township of Huron, Kinloss, the surrounding areas, our local businesses, major stakeholders, and our community organizations. I would like to mention the support of the Hospital Auxiliary. They spend countless hours volunteering their time through initiatives in the hospital with funds going towards the purchases of equipment every year. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention the work of our directors on, and our coordinator on the foundation, Jeff Anscible is here today too. They have spent many hours working with Mike and the hospital team to put forth some proposals to the ministry. We will need the support of our community. This money from the ministry will not cover all the costs. We, have, we are pleased to say that we have hit our fundraising plan running with Bruce Power committing $1 million to get this project off the ground. So thanks to Mike and all the group that was involved. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. And as Becky alluded to, we're very fortunate to have a, a strong supporter of Bruce Power. And very pleased that Mike is here today. Mike Franchek, the president of CEO Bruce Power. And Bruce Power has contributed a $1 million to the CT Scanner edition. So again, Without these supports, we would not be able to, to do what we're doing here today. So, Mike. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It seems it's been quite some time since we've been able to do any type of discussion and purpose, in, in person, I say, for a purpose. <laughs> but it's an exciting day today, and we wouldn't be here without the support of Minister Thompson and Minister Elliott. So, our gratitude and thanks and to our, our municipal leaders as well for all their efforts throughout the years to be able to move us forward. But it's really the, the action groups and the foundations and the boards that guide us have guided us to this point and its participation by the community that have enabled us to be at this stage of now seeing the refurbishment and the development of a CT scanner here at Kincardine Hospital. And we, we couldn't be more proud as Bruce Power and all the employees at Bruce Power to be able to support this endeavor with our donation. You see, some years ago, in 2016, we started an economic development effort with Gray Bruce and Huron Counties. And since that time, we've had over 60 companies move into the area with their, with their employees and their families as well. So building solid and strong infrastructure like a good health care system in the area really helps our helps strengthen our communities and helps strengthen the efforts that we're doing to be in business for many many years to come in fact all the way to 2064 and beyond if we have it our way <laughs> and with our move into medical isotopes at Bruce Power under the leadership of James Skoniak our new business development efforts to create a stronger medical community throughout Ontario and throughout Canada as it relates to medical isotope use for cancer treatments and other diagnostics. We think uh, it's efforts like this that support that vision going forward. So on behalf of Bruce Power and our great employees, we're happy to provide a $1 million donation and we look forward to seeing the uh, refurbishment and the CT scanner up and running uh, hopefully early next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And on behalf of Southbridge Great Health Center, thank you for that tremendous contribution to the, the, to the CT scanner. It means a lot and actually gets us that much closer to getting the CT built and, and operational. So thank you very much. Our next speaker is Ann Eady. I don't think Ann is any stranger to anyone here in the, the room today or in the, the group today. Uh, Mayor of the municipality of Cart, and very pleased to have uh, Ann here to, to bring a few words. So this is very exciting, as many have said, and 
having lived in the area and being involved in both here in Kinloss and King Carden, uh, it has been a long journey. So I am really, really happy to get here. So uh, good news is especially welcome these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is makes the day even more special along with the sunshine today. So as I've been told for years, King Carden has the second busiest emergency department in Grey Bruce, just behind Own Sound. And so our doctors, nurses, and other medical staff need to have what is now considered uh, basic medical equip equipment at such a busy site. So the CT scanner is now routine. And I got a lesson in that a few weeks ago, as the doctors know. Uh, when uh, I brought a family member here, and of course you go through the process, which is always uh, when you're sick, it seems a long time. And then, oh, I think we need a CT scan. So you either need an ambulance or if the family can transport uh, the uh, family member over to Walkerton. And of course, Walkerton does a great job of uh, accommodating you, but it still all takes time. And then you come back here to the hospital so that you can discuss the results with the uh, doctor and then decide on the next course of action. So this is going to be wonderful. One stop shopping when you're sick, right? <laughs> and uh, so I, on behalf of our, our council, our staff, and all our residents in the municipality of King Carden, I want to thank the province and Lisa Thompson uh, for recognizing this great need in our community. It's no secret that along with uh, some of your doctors, we political people have been bugging Lisa, and she's she's very very understanding and receptive. She she saw our need and uh, communicated that well to the province. And as she said, I was here for some of those tours when you brought uh, your fellow uh, cabinet ministers uh, here, and. Uh, and like you, I just remember the cord running right across in the basement over here in addition to other things. And so we're gradually getting there. Things are uh, get, getting fixed up, but we really need this redevelopment and the CT scanner. So I, I can't say enough. Thanks. We're, we're finally getting there. And I can't, I won't go through all the people locally. Uh, uh, because of course our foundation and Becky and, and uh, Jack and all the people involved and the community people, the individual members and businesses that donate generously over the years and will continue to donate in the future. We can't do it without you. And the, the most exciting thing as I conclude is everybody is collaborating and Wonderful things happen when you collaborate, work together, various levels, various organizations in the community, and so it has happened. I'm thrilled. So thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You forgot your mask, and I won't touch it. Oh, I've got this new one here. <laughs> do, do I dare wear it? Um, no, come but I don't think he wants to touch that. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's in your robe. It's okay. It's it's kind of a nice mask. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it has a nice logo on it. Oh. My daughter talks to me about sharing masks. So, <laughs> so municipality okay. of King Guard. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Ann. Uh, we also had strong support from the municipality, the township of here in Kinloss. I'm very pleased that Mitch Tulin, the mayor of here in Kinloss, is here to bring a few words. Great community. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, uh, everyone. And for those that don't know, this is the Ripley Fall Fair weekend, so was there ever any doubt we weren't going to have nice weather today? <laughs> Good, point. Good point. So, uh, first off, Lisa, thank you to you, uh, Minister Thompson and the Ford government for finally making this happen. I know I was talking to Michael briefly uh, a little bit earlier this morning, and I remember being here in 2007 as the warden back then about an announcement coming. So today I'm very, very pleased for this to happen. So, Michael, uh, on behalf of you and Kim Law, thank you to you and your team 
Dr. Gerben, uh, I know this is a long time coming for you, and uh, I remember Jack us being down in the basement for meetings many, many, many years ago, and uh, so it's uh, really nice to see you here today, and Larry and Becky, and everybody in this community and the surrounding communities here in Kinloss are obviously the second biggest users of this facility, so this is great for the County of Bruce, economic development for the whole area. And uh, so to Michael, this is almost like an MCR project here for the <laughs> redevelopment. So uh, thank you for the generosity from uh, Bruce Power as well. And uh, so collectively, we've all made this happen. It's, uh, it's everyone that's sitting here today and all of those people that have supported and the businesses that have supported this uh, redevelopment. So thank you very much. And uh, this is a great day for Kincard and the surrounding area. mentioned our last two speakers are physicians so without physicians we would not be able to run the hospital and um, since I've come I've been here about two years now um, so impressed with the quality physicians their commitment to the hospital uh, commitment to each other um, and it's a challenge in a, a small hospital it's very challenging to be a physician and be the, the jack of all trades so many times so I'm going to start with Dr. Sung. Dr. Sung is the site chief here at Concordia um, and a wonderful addition to the South Bruce Gray Health Centre team, and today it's going to bring a few words. Thanks, Mike. I wanted to focus more on what the Concard and CT addition means for our patients. As uh, someone that essentially lives in this hospital, it's no <laughs> secret that I order a good proportion of our CT scans. The highlight for me is that we can provide safer care. Sometimes our patients are too sick to be transported for a CT scan and instead have to be immediately transferred to an ICU. To have an in-house scanner gives us the ability to have more data earlier on that allows us to give better care when time matters most. Access to care also improves. Patients no longer have to drive out of town for this test, especially during winter. And in the ER, if a scan is required, the visit doesn't turn into a whole day event particularly if one isn't able to drive to Walkerton for the scan. Healthcare becomes more efficient for both providers and patients. And the last point I want to talk about is standard of care and physician recruitment. Having a CT scan as an immediately available diagnostic tool is something that physicians are trained to practice with. When physicians look to practice at a hospital, CT access is an important consideration, especially for hospitals with relatively high volume and acuity like ours. I'm optimistic that having our own CT scanner, in addition to the plans for hospital redevelopment, uh, will have positive implications for Kincardine to attract new physicians. There's been a lot of work with getting both these projects. <laughs> There's been a lot of work with getting both these projects approved and funded. And on behalf of the physician group, I want to extend both thanks and appreciation to everyone involved. So thank you. We're really, really excited about this. Thank you, Dr. Sung. And our last speaker is Dr. Gerben. So uh, we have a good mix of newer physicians, young, great, like Dr. Sung, and experienced physicians like Dr. Gerben. <laughs> and very pleased that Dr. Gerben is here today. He's been a uh, key part of the current hospital so, for, for so many, many years. And very pleased with you wrap things up today with Dr. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, and uh, honored guest, Elisa, Mike, um, Gordon. Uh, so, clearly a thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm here, I'm really as chair of the Kincardine Family Health Team. Uh, and uh, on behalf of that, can across the, the lot there, if people look over at the Hawthorne Community, Medical Clinic uh, is the adjunct to the facility here. It's uh, really a secondary care facility, but the basis and the nucleus of health care here in this area and, and surrounding environment is, is, is the medical clinic and the primary care physicians that work out of there. So the family health team has initiated a pretty ambitious uh, new enterprise called the Cardiology Imaging Center. And this today uh, is representative of 
is a key component of what will be for the area a, a center of excellence for looking after people with heart problems. And uh, we know, uh, Dr. Sheen and others here, the importance of that type of service to our area. This is augmenting now the, the CAT scan that will sit here. I, I didn't know where it was going, but that's terrific that it would be here. It's sitting uh, to be attached to the redevelopment, but will also provide uh, an area that will see in the future an MRI and a nuclear scanner, which will then complete all of the services that are required for our cardiac imaging center. The nuclear scanner will work nicely with the radioisotopes that uh, Mike and his crew are, are developing down the road. Uh, it'll be a service that will be supported by Dr. Yu, Dr. Raymond Yu, who's the head of cardiology at London Health Sciences and who is here with us today in spirit and has asked me to, to bring greetings and appreciation and thanks from London uh, and London Health Sciences for this particular support of this particular project and uh, I just want to put uh, both Bruce Power and the community and everybody else on notice that the next phase of this will be the MRI and then the <laughs> nuclear scanner and uh, that this will then support what Dr. Seen has very very nicely represented to you as a reason for people to come here and stay in practice and, and uh, look after patients but also provide a level of care here uh, that the, the area residents will benefit from and will help to support the activities that Bruce Power is going to go to 2064 and beyond. So, uh, tremendously excited. Uh, I should finalize by saying that this, this is not a dream. This is a vision for sure, but it's not a dream. It's something that's real. We have already got three visiting cardiologists coming here on a regular basis from London Health Sciences, and that's been going on for years. We've already got an echocardiogram service that's as good as anywhere in Ontario or the world. Uh, first class services, all because of the internet and things that can be done remotely now. Uh, and the same thing with the CAT scanner here. The CAT scanner will work here now because we don't have a radiologist who will come here, but they can read what Dr. King orders instantaneously from London or, or anywhere else that the, the radiologist might be. So that's really an important thing to understand that we're not limited here now as we used to be by having to have a specialist for every single thing. We've got access, we've got the capacity to do the things that we can imagine we want to do and that we're willing to support. There's tremendous support from the foundation and from the people here that are sitting here today, many of them uh, who have helped to make this happen. So I look forward to working with all of you in the future. And thanks so much for your support today. And there's no question what's going to happen to them.